Welcome to another round of my little guitar demo series. Today I am not demoing a guitar, you know, we are in a very special situation which makes it rather hard to get new guitars to demo from some folks. Um, uh, but of course I have a nice guitar here, that's a, uh, yeah, this is my bread and butter Les Paul. Uh, a very inspiring instrument. It's a uh, 1986 uh, Nashville production, Gibson Les Paul Standard, with some modifications. But again, I don't want to demo a guitar today. I I was somehow inspired by a video of uh, a very profound YouTuber uh, when it comes to music here on YouTube, which is uh, Rick Beato. And he um, recently uploaded a video called something like The Irrelevance of Classic Rock um, when it comes to modern music or perfect music. And uh, yes, it cannot be stressed enough um, that the imperfections, the, 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 the human factor in music is what is very important in music. And I also see I'm just cross viewing some YouTube videos or listening to 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 some records or some some files in independent music scene, that also guitarists uh, fall victim to this over perfect attitude when when they make music. Everything needs to be perfect. Everything needs to be quantized to the point. Everything needs to be fine tuned. The smallest noise which is supposed not to belong there, is killed, you know, while editing or something like that. So I thought I used the time today to demonstrate some of you who are interested that um, you, you can come up with great stuff just because of these imperfections and, and what can be achieved by concentrating on this human factor, you know, to, to, to really let it happen, not to to find polish, you know. <laughs> uh, to to begin with, um, because of the lockdown situation, I uh, adopted a bass guitar here from a good friend. Um, it was from the last band rehearsal be before the lockdown uh, was announced. And um, this is a very uh, <laughs> interesting bass. It has eight strings, not four. It has, it's an eight string bass. It's a Kramer. Uh, from the early 80s, very rare, uh, also ultra heavy, but um, yeah, has an, a very interesting sound. And I took it in my hands uh, uh, a few days ago and was just playing around, you know, I'm not a bass player, but I also play bass for my playbacks and everything to my abilities. And uh, yeah, it was like always, the bass was not really tuned, it was it was in tune, but it, it became a little bit detuned when I played with it. And then I, I developed an idea. Uh, and I recorded this idea, but the bass was not 100% tuned. And I also didn't play the riff uh, I came up with in this moment, because it, it just happened. Uh, not really perfect, you know. Just listen to the intro here, which is the bass alone, that you get an idea. Tune-ish. It's it's far from perfect. Other people in the studio would or have already run this bass through an out of tuning, out of pitch uh, circuit or something like that, or better just tuned the bass. But I decided to let it happen. And very important, I played this bass because it was happening, you know, uh, from the beginning to the end. I did two passes. Then I did choose the one pass which was the most musical from from for my ears. And then I took the guitar, played over the bass line with a click and realized this is somewhat sounding interesting. Well, not too bad. So I took the time and programmed some drums. This is not a drum sample or something like that. I used a sampler. It's, a, it's called Contact. It's the Contact drum sampler. So the sounds are sampled. What should I do? I, I'm not allowed to have a drummer here. But um, I played most of the stuff live with my fingers and uh, try to avoid 
quantizing, you know, the 16th quantizing. Um, some of you uh, will be familiar with from sequencing programs or other digital audio workstations. So I just did minor corrections where, where I was too off. <laughs> and, and that's it. And now I have this playback here and I, I play live now the guitar over this playback. And again, think about the following. The bass line, it starts with the pitch, was not perfect. It was also not perfectly played. The drums were also played in a in a rush. You know, it, I, 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 I didn't edit for, for 10 days uh, for that. It's just one hour. And uh, now I play the guitar live. Of course, I have an idea about the riff. It, it was my riff in the very first place. But uh, I, myself, I'm not used to this riff. So I, I just let happen that maybe I, 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 yeah, I overplay or I don't know what is happening. But you tell me later what the result is when you just hear this dry bass intro with all these imperfections and then all together, guitar, bass and drums. And for amplification today, I use the stereo amp setup. I do that very often. Here I have my TubeMaster 36 in the control room and uh, in the other room, in the recording room, there's a nearly fully cranked up PV Classic 50 watts. And uh, I used, as you can see here in the detail, a little um, Boss Chorus pedal to split the signal, you know, from one guitar that I can deliver the signal to both amps. And because it's a chorus and, and it looks so nice to me, I, I turned it on, of course, because a chorus delivers nice, imperfect frequencies. You get the picture. Before I battle too much, I just play a little bit. Have fun. <laughs> So, what do you think? I mean, isn't it interesting? <clears throat> I play over a imperfect playback. And I play imperfect over the playback. I just jam over it. And um, it sounds alive, isn't it? This is I want to, to bring over. Because I, you know, you know the term writer's block. 
This happens very often uh, from my observation uh, with people who, and especially in the moment, with people who work alone and just work with a computer and um, always have this absolutely perfect 4, 4, 16, quantizing, everything is perfect, everything is pitch controlled. And then you even don't get any musical ideas because this very important musical element is missing. And this is the humanized factor, the human factor. Uh, the imperfection which makes it perfect, you know, which makes it groove. This is what I wanted to bring over with this little short demo today. Maybe some folks have a little inspiration from that. That would be nice. That would be my uh, my biggest reward. And uh, yeah, maybe I should do a song from that. But hey, it's classic rock. Nobody wants to hear that anymore. huh? But it makes it extremely fun, especially when you play in a band with other people, with other human factors. This being said, I wish you lots of musical inspiration. Use this time now. Uh, play your instrument and have a nice day. See you next time. Bye-bye.